Some of the base metal prices overnight could suggest that we've got some support for the local material stocks today. Copper led the gains overnight, but the month of August, again, turned out to be the worst monthly performance for copper in more than a year. Aluminium also recording its weakest performance since May 2010. Zinc, the weakest since November 2010. And tin's greatest monthly loss since October of 2008. For a closer look at some of these commodity moves today, though, Larry Shova joins us from Efficient Capital Management. And copper actually finished with a nice, I think it was a 1.5% gain today, Larry. How much of that? do you think was driven by some of the better than expected economic news out of the U.S.? You know, Brooke, uh, copper right now is just so confusing to me because part of it is the, ec the good economic vibe that's coming out right now. Part of it is short cover, and keep in mind that there are a lot of people, on a technical point of view, who have been shorted over the past three months just covering also the Grosberg strike that's supposed to happen September 9th, getting people long. Also, we got the PMI number coming out in China. I'm going to stay up and watch this. They're, they're calling for, for a 51 spot three number. If it comes out anywhere below that, especially where it was in July at 50.7, I would sell copper. But right now, it's a dead cat bounce. It's within the range where it needs to be. But I think a lot of it is just the economic vibe. It's riding on this risk on environment. Mm -hmm. Bring us maybe across some of the news that sees um, this this view developing of tighter supplies in the short term because there's actually been quite a lot out kind of around the copper price. Yeah, there actually has been short supplies, and you can see that by at least in China, the bonded warehouse. <clears throat> The uh, inventory has fallen. The premiums have risen in Shanghai. It's fundamentally, it makes sense for copper to go up to $4.20 a pound where it is today right now. But overall, I'm thinking that we went down too, too far and too quickly. And this is, if you will, a uh, dead cat bounce in copper at $4.20 a pound. Can I ask about gold as well? We had the scare last week, down more than $100 in a session. It was only down a couple of dollars today, but it, it is still around the recent highs. Do you think the bears or the bulls have really got the upper hand in the near term when it comes to gold? I have to say the, <clears throat> the bulls have the upper hand with gold. I mean, it, it fell out of bed $200 in a week, and a lot of that was margins uh, coming out of Shanghai, coming out of CME. Part of it was just technical uh, sell signals. A market can't keep going up forever. But keep in mind something that most people don't talk about is that the gross profit margin in gold right now is only about 70%. That's a, that, that definitely is a tidy profit, but it's not a bubble right now. And with, with, with the unknowns, with the FOMC, with Greece, with uh, the bumbling in Washington, money is staying cheap. I think the bulls do have the upper hand, and I do think 2000 by the end of the year is uh, a no-brainer. Hi Larry, Chris Stott here from the studio in Sydney. Look, we, when we've gone through QE1 and QE2, we saw the impact that that had uh, on commodity prices during that period. To what extent now QE3 uh, is very much, it seems, on the table again? To what extent do you, well, what impact do you think that will have uh, on commodity prices if that were to be implemented? Yeah, you know, we're already seeing that impact, I think, when you look at copper, when you look at oil, things that have so many factors involved, but the market is pricing in that Ben Bernanke is going to do something at the end of September. We're not sure what that's going to be, but I think the least path of resistance for him would be just to, to uh, rebalance his uh, balance sheet and perhaps buy longer duration bonds right now. So that's going to uh, increase all the value of commodities. So I, and I do think today um, has shown that, that the market's pricing that in, that Bernanke definitely is going to do something at the end of September. So, Larry, do you think it could be, a, 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 in terms of uh, that scenario playing out, do you think it could be a fact of buying rumour, sell the fact on commodity prices? Yeah, I do think <clears throat> what, whatever he happens to do will have an effect on commodity prices. It's all according to what he does, because if we do go into recession, obviously, we'll see commodity prices fall. But if he does something where he's going to add liquidity to the market, whether it's <clears throat> a 24-7 open door to liquidity, whether he uh, drops bank rates to zero, whether he buys longer duration, it's all depending on what he does in comparison to the recession that we might end up having in the next three or four months. 
Can we get your view on maybe US equities as well, Larry? Um, because when it comes to the search for yield, I mean, some people will say you can't really get it in gold. They're, they're searching for yield elsewhere. Do you think um, there is value in US equities? Absolutely. I think there's some great values right now. And here's why. Right now, if you look at um, stock correlation, right now it's running at a 95 percentile, basically an all-time high. And what that says is that all stocks are being looked through through a single lens. So right now it's a great time to buy stocks that, are, that have a strong balance sheet, that have a good dividend, a low beta. And beta definitely uh, basically is... Uh, the volatility compared to the overall market. There's some great values out there, stocks that, that have been hit with the rest of the market. I'm thinking of uh, stocks like uh, Kimberly Clark, Boeing, um, J&J, et cetera. There's some good companies out there paying a good dividend, much higher than 10-year uh, yield right now, and uh, they're good for the taking. Actually, Larry, I want to add one more thing. I'm, I was watching you on something else, actually, um, talking about this risk of, going back to the macro, this risk of inflation, and deflation happening at the same time. You just talked about the Fed a little bit earlier, but how do you actually get that scenario? Well, right now, I think we're almost seeing it. I mean, I don't see inflation or deflation. I see what's called inverse stagflation, which is where you have inflation and deflation working together quite nicely, actually. Over the long haul, you're going to see paper assets, whether it be equities or stocks, underperforming. And I've been preaching that for a while, that stocks are cheap, but they can remain cheap for a while. And in the long term, you're going to have hard asset prices go up, whether it be wheat, whether it be copper, whether it be oil. You're going to have this combination of things that we haven't seen. So economists don't know what to do with it. I've called it inverse stagflation, and it's something I think we'll see for the next couple of years. Hi, Larry. Chris in the studio again. Look, you, you touched on there. You have some sort of expectation that uh, we could you know, double dip, particularly in the U.S. Um, that, that seems to be priced a lot into the market at the moment, uh, as far as we can see. In the European crisis, uh, we know that they've got trouble over there. Uh, to what extent um, over the next six to 12 months should investors position for that scenario? Well, right now, <laughs> if I was an investor for the, ne the next uh, six to 12 to 18 months, I would do whatever I can to get involved with the, some long only commodities, given that uh, the unknowns we have with the government. I would stay out of um, uh, low beta stocks, getting in something that has a, a dividend, a corporate yield. Also, uh, CTA exposure, something that Australians know quite well. Alpha, where you're um, betting on a manager's skill to provide excess return on an asset, whether it be trading copper, whether it be trading oil, foreign exchange. The volatility is really high right now. It's a great time to get involved in any type of uh, CTA exposure. Great. Larry, great to have you on board the program again. Thanks so much. Have a good week. Larry Shover from Efficient Capital Management.